Geo is gone from Rangers and we've now realised that over the past 12 months not only was his tactics, not only was his style of football shit, but also his signings were shit. 11 signings in total under the Geo era and honestly maybe one or two of them get past Mark. So I'm here to rank all the Rangers signings while Gio Van Bronckhorst was in charge. So he had two transfer windows in charge. He had the 2021-2022 winter transfer window. And he had the 2022-2023 summer transfer window. 11 players in total. Going to rank them from 11th to best. So 11th all the way through to 1. I'm going to look at certain criteria. I'm going to look at how much the player cost. How many games the player has played expectation of the player when coming in i'm going to mix it all in and i am going to rank the 11 players now with that said let's move on to number 11 let's move on to who is last and it is matthias sukowoski this guy was supposed to be the replacement for nathan parson and what a failure that was he came in played one game in the cup and then he was never seen again hopefully rangers filed a missing persons report because this guy came in, played one cup game, went AWOL. What a joke. Now they've loaned them out. So this was an absolute failure. The only consolation is I don't think they spent that much money on him. He, he was like technically a free, but there was like an undisclosed fee in there as well. So I don't think it was a lot of money. It was probably peanuts. I, I can, the Rangers don't really spend big money anyway. So I can't imagine it was a lot. But this guy has to be a failure. One game for the club and probably will never play another game for the club again. Coming in at number 10, a player that I rate, a player that I think highly of, that is John Souter. Rangers got him on a free once his Hearts contract ran out. He came in, played the opening game of the season against Livingston. Was it a fault for the goal that Joel Newbley scored? Rangers did come back 1-2-1. But we haven't seen John Souter come back since that. He has had difficulties. He's been injured. He had a death in the family. I believe his brother passed away. So, you know, that's sad. Hopefully Souter can... I don't know if you ever get over your brother dying, but hopefully Souter can, you know, come back from that, get back injury free and get back into the Rangers team. But as of right now, I've got to put him in 10th because he's played one game and it was a really bad game. His debut was a bit of a disaster. So yeah, I think this guy's got a lot of potential. I could, if we, if you do this list in maybe two years time, he could be a lot higher up it. But right now he has to be in 10th. He's played one game and it was a shit game to say the least. Coming in at number 9, we have Red Fan Yilmaz. Rangers paid 3.4 million for this guy and he could barely get a game over underperforming Barisic. He's played three games in total for Rangers in the league. He's played a couple of cup games as well and I think he featured in one of the European games. So overall, he's only played a couple of games, but he might have played his last game because at the moment he's injured, it's looking like he wants out in January. So yeah, <laughs> if that's the case, if he never plays a game for it, even if he does play a game, it's just such a fucking waste. 3.4 million, you expect him to come in and be the number one left back. Instead, he spent most of his Rangers spell warming the bench. And Rangers, when they do spend 3.4 million, that's a lot of money for Rangers. They need to make sure they are getting a good player for 3.4 million, a valuable player, an important player, and at the moment, Yelmaz has not been that. So I'm going to put him in at number nine. I do think there is some potential. I think he looks a decent player, but until he gets more game time, until he proves it, he's number nine for me on this list. Coming in at number eight, we have Aaron fucking Ramsey. Now, the reason why I'm putting Aaron Ramsey doing a number eight is because this guy came in, and at the time, a lot of people are speaking about this signing as if it was the biggest signing in Scottish football history. And I was one of those people. I think everybody was. But the people expected Ramsey to come in and to like just take the Scottish Premiership by storm and to like almost you know single-handedly win Rangers games and carry Rangers and just be the star player. I think people expect that Ramsey to be the first name on the team sheet to be this fucking magical magician. Truth be told though, he was pretty shit. He had a couple, he had like a handful of games where he played okay. But overall, the guy wasn't good. He had seven, he made seven appearances in the league. For Rangers got two goals, he had a couple in the cup. And we, how can you forget his European game, the cup final? He comes on 
misses a penalty, man. Unbelievable. Didn't cost Rangers anything because he was on loan. But when you think of the reputation Ramsey had, when you think of the quality that he's shown before, especially a couple of the seasons that he had when he was at Arsenal, to me, it's just insane that he came to Rangers and he played so bad. So underwhelming. We expected so much more for Ramsey. And unfortunately, he just didn't deliver. So yeah, Ramsey's coming in at number eight. Coming in at number seven, we have Rabi Matondo. Uh, a Rangers player, in my opinion, hasn't done anything. 2.5 million spent on him. He hasn't scored a single goal since he came to Rangers. He's made 18 appearances in total and no goals. Now, if you look at his career record, he's made 96 appearances in his entire career. Now, let's take away... Is it, yeah, let's take away the Rangers ones for that, right? So let, let's be fair. Let's take away his Rangers appearances. So take 18 away from 96. That leaves you 78. In those 78 games before he joined Rangers, he scored 16 goals. So if you're averaging 16 goals in 78 games, you're approximately... You're doing about a goal every... Every four and a half games, right? That may, that may not be exactly correct, but it's close enough, right? You're averaging a goal every four and a half games. So, that means technically, since he's played 18 games at Rangers, you would expect Aaron Ramsey to have... I mean, not Aaron Ramsey. You would expect Rabi Matondo to have four goals on average, since that's what he's been averaging his in career. So, you'd expect him to be averaging that at Rangers. But, it's not the case. He's got zero. So, to me, he's just another... He's basically another Sakala. No end product, although I actually think I prefer Sakala over uh, Rabi Matondo. But for me, 2.5 million. It looks like 2.5 million down the drain. Matondo coming in at number seven. Coming in at number six, we have Ben Davis. Um, started his Rangers career, it was shocking. Just couldn't get a game, wasn't fit, wasn't trusted, couldn't get off the bench. I think since he has started playing games for Rangers, he's been okay. But still, it costs three million. I just expect it more from him. He, he looks an okay centre back. Okay, he looks half decent. But again, when Rangers spend three million on someone, I expect them to be more than half decent. Rangers can get half decent centre backs for less than three million. So when they spend three million, you expect them to sign a quality player for the, for the level of Rangers. And I, and I just don't see Ben Davis being that. I don't. I think if Rangers have all their defenders fully fit, I don't think Ben Davis plays. So for me, Davis is coming in at six. Like I said, I think he's been okay. But for three million, I expect it a wee bit more. Coming at number five, we have Ahmed Diallo. Now this guy was rated as a wonder kid. People said, oh, he's worth about 40 million. He came into Rangers. He scored like a couple of minutes in his, into his debut. He scored, like, I think it was against St Mirren. He scored a couple of minutes in. And then ever since that, he just didn't perform. You know, he just didn't compete at the same level. Made 13 appearances for Rangers. Scored three goals. I mean, that's not a horrible record. But overall, he just he did not live up to the hype. When you think you're getting a £40 million wonder kid, you expect them to do wonderful things. And Diallo just did not really do it. He was really poor in a lot of his games. And yeah, he wasn't very rated. I didn't rate him. But when you consider how poor the rest of the players were, I think he gets fifth in the list. Because I think based on his goals and the fact that he was alone, so he didn't cost him anything, I, I would put him above everyone else that I've mentioned beforehand. So Diallo comes in at number five. Moving on to number four, we have Malik Tillman. Again, another player that has showed glimpses of stuff that he can do. But overall, he hasn't been good. I don't think he can give Tillman pass marks. Um, again, he, well, he is on loan, so Rangers technically aren't paying anything for him. So that's why I put him a little bit higher up, because they haven't wasted any money. They haven't spent any money. So at the moment, it's not really a bad deal. He has made 23 appearances for Rangers and scoring four goals. I mean, that's not bad, especially for, you know, a, a midfielder, a cam, so to speak. But... If you look at his record before he went to Rangers, he was he was averaging a lot more. You know, his time his time at by Bayern Munich's um, second team, he had twenty four appeals and nine goals. So at Rangers, he's got twenty three appearances and only four goals. So how's you know how's that work out? It, it just you know these players they come to Rangers and they're just not delivering the same stats. As they were beforehand, you know, they're not scoring the same amount of goals or getting the same amount of assists. They're just not playing at the level 
they were before they went to Rangers. So maybe it's not necessarily a player thing. Maybe it's Rangers. Maybe Rangers are causing these players to underperform. But for me, Malik Tillman is coming in at number four. Right now we're moving on to number three. It's Tom Lawrence. And I would... From Tom Lawrence up, I would give these players pass marks. I think these players have been okay. That's not that's not me saying Tom Lawrence has been great, or the person above Tom Lawrence has been great, but I would give Tom Lawrence a pass mark. For Rangers in the league, he has made five appearances, he scored two goals, he looked good, he did get injured, which again sucks, it wasn't really his fault, there's not a lot he could do. He made four appearances in Europe, including one goal. Uh, and in total, for Rangers, he has nine appearances and three goals. So, yeah, it's, he's not made a lot of appearances, but he has looked good. So, yeah, I would be optimistic when he comes back. Plus, Rangers did get him on a free. So, he looks a good player for a free. And who knows if he stayed fit, he, he could have had a lot more goals. And, yeah, I, I do think there is a lot of potential with Tom Lawrence. I would say he has been, so far, a good signing. It's just the injuries haven't helped but yeah i think tom lawrence could be a good player for rangers once he comes back from his injury moving into number two on the list it's going to be controversial but i'm going to go with james sands i think james sands is a good player and many a times i think he's been made it to be a scapegoat i don't really see that being his fault i think at times he's been a lot better than golden at the back so for me rangers have a solid player in james sands and it's someone that i would be interested in keeping he's currently on loan i believe his loan deal runs out soon if I was Rangers, I would try and make it permanent, even if it does cost a bit of money. I think it would be worth it. I think Sands, at times, has shown a lot of promise. And moving on to number one, I don't think it could be anyone but this man. It is Antonio Cholak. Now, a lot some Rangers fans don't like Cholak. Some Rangers fans say he doesn't contribute enough. He doesn't work hard enough. He, he doesn't hold up the play enough. He doesn't, you know, create enough opportunities. And, and while I don't necessarily disagree with that, how can you criticise this guy? Without this guy's goals this season, Rangers would be fucked. 14 league appearances, 11 league goals. And he's also got some goals in Europe as well. It did cost Rangers 1.8 million, but that has to be the best 1.8 million Rangers have spent in a very long time. Apart from maybe the money they spent on getting rid of Gio, maybe that was a better, uh, better money well spent. But yeah, for, for Cholak... I, I don't think you can really criticise the guy. Could you want his overall play to be a bit better? Yes. But to have, have, to have a go at the guy, man, with the situation Rangers are in, and this he's single-handedly winning them games, scoring goals, uh, to me it is crazy how much uh, Rangers fans have actually been having a go at Antoni Antonio Cholak. For me, he is number one on this list by a country mile. Um, like I said, I, I would definitely have him at the top. I would give Sands and Lawrence pass marks. Everyone else, I'm not too sure about. But for me, Cholak is head and shoulders above everyone else. A great 1.8 million spent. And uh, yeah, to get to get a goal scorer that's that's that clinical for 1.8 million Rangers, in my opinion, done themselves a very good deal. But anyway, that's it, guys. That is all the players ranked in order that have been signed under the Geo Fan Broncos uh, era. So again, from last to first, it was Suwoski, Suter, Yilmaz, Ramsey, Matondo, Davis, Diallo, Tillman, Lawrence, Sands. And up front, number one, pun intended, Cholak. Let me know, guys, what you think down below. Do you disagree with my list? Do you agree with my list? And if you want, give me your list down below in the comments. I'll reply to it, and I'll give you my thoughts. But that's it from Fog Football this time. Until the next video. Until next time, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.